Today I'm gonna show you how you can create a compelling environment concept art using 3D and 2D techniques. I'll be sure to sprinkle some useful information along the way so make sure you watch the whole thing. So let's get right into it. And also subscribe to my weekly newsletter, it's free. I send info on how to be a full-time artist along with some freebies every once in a while of course. Alright, without wasting any more time, let's do this. To create a scene like this, I'll require some images or 3D. And for that, I downloaded some PNG images of the buildings in various angles. These are available on Envato Elements. We basically rotate the 3D model in any angle that we like and download a PNG image with a transparent background. Now if you don't have Envato Elements, no problem. You can do the same thing with some images of these types of buildings. But you'll have to spend some time researching for better angles and also to cut these buildings out of a background. I started the artwork by placing all of the PNG images on my canvas and then arranging them. The biggest advantage that I have is that I don't have to make selections around these images. The background is already transparent. So when I place an image above the other, it doesn't show any poorly selected edges or anything, which is great. I'm just placing the buildings in a line to get a sense of perspective. I put some of the buildings in the back as well. By the way, if you're interested in getting Envato Elements, feel free to check out the link in the description. It's only $16 a month on an annual subscription, but you can also test it out for a month and if you don't like it, you can always cancel it. Right after I placed the PNGs, I am looking to add a sky. I like to put the sky in there at the very beginning because it's really helpful. It helps set the tone and lighting of the piece. Just like in 3D, your SDRI image dictates the lighting around the 3D models. In 2D, a sky image in the background proves to be a great reference point to match your subject's lighting and color. I also wanted to place some foreground elements as well, for which I just scaled some of the PNGs and put them closer to our viewpoint. I also wanted to change the aspect ratio to make the overall scene look a bit more cinematic, a wide angle shot that would look straight out of a movie. Moreover, I also wanted to create some sense of a ground too. Next, I wasn't really feeling the sky, so I tried to paint it bluer because I wanted to make it like a dark blue gothic city. I know that the overall look and feel would change entirely, but that's fine. I think it will look good and suit the theme as well. Next, I selected each individual buildings, selected the blue color from the sky, set the layers blending mode to overlay and painted over the buildings. I could have changed the color balance of the images to match the sky as well, but I find this overlay technique very effective as well. Also you must be noticing that when I make a new overlay layer, I clip it inside the buildings layer. This way when I paint, I don't end up painting outside the selected building. So it's a pretty neat trick that I use with each of these buildings. After making them all bluer, I made a normal layer on top of the overlay layer, selected a lighter color from the sky and painted the distant buildings to basically lower their value and make them look farther in the distance. Notice that the farthest buildings will have the lowest values and as they get closer to the camera, they will have relatively darker values and higher contrast. Like the foreground buildings will be still relatively darker. I wasn't really feeling good about the building in the center so I decided to remove it. Instead, I replicated another image from the midground and added that into the composition. Since the tower was obscuring too much of the distant buildings, I removed it too.
After painting the ground and adding some texture, I went on with loosely painting some elements to get a sense of direction for myself. This loose painting helps me visualize where I want to go next with this artwork and enables me to take quick design decisions. So I knew I had to add some trees in there maybe, some fence-like elements and a figure for a sense of scale. And lastly, the scene is all blue and requires some additional color, so maybe some yellow in the buildings. Then I made the distant buildings even farther by painting over some lighter blues with a round soft brush and of course some fog at the bottom and in between buildings to build some sort of a separation. After that I added some shadows to make the lighting read a bit better. I mostly did that on the right side of the buildings and then some color dodge to make some highlights as well. Next, following the loose sketch that I created previously, I went on to build some of the elements that I want to include in the scene. I will be including the wall, some trees, a fence, etc. I'll also add some shadows to the statue and surround it with some kind of structure. After that, I decided to add brushwork to parts of the artwork and refine some shapes. I'm using a brush that has a lot of texture to it. This is one of my favorite brushes of all time. I'll also be adding some leaves to the trees as well. Okay, so a little change in direction here. Instead of making it an empty, abandoned city, let's make it a city with some sort of an activity going on. So if we need to make it look like people actually live here, we might need some more light in those windows. I used overlay to create some light and color on the trees. Then I'll just paint some light on the edges of the trees and on the low wall. Maybe some foreground will catch some of that reflection as well, so I'm also painting some yellows on the foreground. The statue on the left could also use some lighting, so I made a yellow light from the left. Next, I'll move on to creating some more elements on the right, like some candles. This way, I'll also be able to add some of that yellow lighting on the right side of the foreground as well. Now for the last part, which is quite fun. I've gathered some images of people walking in the streets and have cut them out from their backgrounds. I'll just place them all on the artwork, we'll paint some additional stuff on them to fit the overall theme and try to match the lighting as well. And with that, I'll be adding some more details here and there and some fog. So enjoy the rest of the process and then we'll move on to the final image.
All right, I hope you like this video. Hope you learned something new. Hit like, comment below, and consider subscribing. And also, don't miss the notification bell. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.